Okay, it's a pleasure to welcome Rabbi Adam Inns. I just do want to thank and mention our sponsors of today's program. Our sponsor, Jeff Weiss, a longtime friend, went to camp back with him many, many years ago, live in the neighborhood. I want to thank him who is sponsoring the uh, the day Yomi Yun in loving memory of his parents, Binyamin, Benjamin and Judith White, Binyamin Ben Chaim and Chaya, Vito Bet Yukadiel Yehuda, Yehizur Konam Baruch, and uh, may we celebrate happy occasions. Okay, rabbi Mintz is the rabbi of Kilat Re'im Ahuvin. Uh, he spoke last when he gave his series on the air of the history of the air of his subject of his PhD, and in a half an hour talk, that's all the introduction I'll give. Bakasha, Rabbi Mintz. Thank you so much, Rabbi Kellerman. It's always a treat to be able to speak um, to, for Torah in Motion. This is a, a great um, a great day of great shiurim. Just say that um, my wife Sharon is an old friend of Jeff Weiss um, as well, so it's nice to pull this all together. And we thank, on behalf of Sharon, I thank you for sponsoring um, these classes today. So my my topic, my job today is Halach Manya. It says halach ma'anya and manishtana, but that's too big a job, Rabbi Kelvin. So we'll we'll look at manish, at, at, at halach ma'anya. And if you could please um, share the sources um, so that we can um, look at the text together. So we we know um, we know halach ma'anya. We start the seder with kiddush, then we have the karpas, then we break the the matzah, the yachatz. And then we begin what we call the Magid, the story of the Haggadah. And the Haggadah really begins with Manishtana, right? That's the that's the way the Haggadah um that, that's the way the Haggadah works, um, with with um with Manishtana. But you know, the questions and then the answers. But we have a paragraph that introduces the Manishtana, which is Halachmanya. Halachmanya does not appear in the Mishnah and does not appear in the Gemara. It actually, for the first time, appears in the Haggadahs of the Gaonim. Sometime between the year 1100 and 1000 is the first time that Halach Ma'anya appears in the Haggadah. That in itself is super interesting because most of the Haggadah goes back to the time of the Mishnah. So if you have something that's added later, that requires you know further kind of focus to try to understand why it's uh, added. So are we telling me, am I supposed to share my con my sources or you share them? I, I did, share them? If you'd like to, yeah, you can also share. I have okay, I can share. Can Here we share. go. Okay. One second. Okay, so here we go. Um, so, halach ma'anya. Halach ma'anya diachalu v'avasana v'ara de Mitzrayim. It says, this is the bread of destitution. This is really the bread of affliction that our fathers ate in the land of Egypt. Kol dich vin yete v'yechol, kol ditzrich yete v'yipsach. Whoever is hungry should come and eat. Whoever is needy should come and join the Pesach. Hashata hacha, now we are here. Lishana habab arad Yisrael. The next year will be in Israel. Hashata avde lishana habab in Echorin. This year we're slaves. This year, next year we will be free. Now, halach ma'anya is short. First of all, it's in Aramaic. So everything in Aramaic we know is um, is 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 um, needs to be noted. Why is it in Aramaic? Because that's the language that the Jews spoke in Babylonia at the time of the Gaonim. So having something that introduces the Seder in Aramaic would be like today having something um, in, in at the beginning of the Seder in English, a welcome in English. So if you're going to have a welcome in English to the whole Seder, and the whole Seder is in Hebrew, a language that's not so familiar, so you have to understand what. What is the purpose of this introduction? So Halach Ma'anya has three lines, three subject matters, none of which seems to be related to the other. Line number one talks about the matzah. Halach Ma'anya. This is the bread of affliction that our forefathers ate in Egypt. The second line is an invitation. Now, the invitation is a little problematic. We'll come back to that. And that is everyone's sitting around their Seder already. Who are you inviting, right? The inviting needs to take place ahead of time. As a technicality in the time of the, of the temple, 
actually the eating of the carbon Pesach, the invitations had to be done ahead of time. You couldn't invite someone. You couldn't you couldn't have met someone in shul and invited them at the last second to your to your seder. So um, it's interesting exactly what the invitation is. Rabbi Silverberg um, is on is on the Zoom call this morning, and yesterday he told me that his grandfather used to actually go out on the street. And, uh, you know, at this part of the Seder and invite, you know, and look around if there was anybody looking for a Seder. Which really makes the line come to life. And then finally, it's kind of a statement about Jewish history. Today we're here. Next year we'll be in Israel. Today we're, today we're slaves. Next year we will be free. Now, the only way to unpack this famous but enigmatic little introduction is to take each line separately. And really what I want to argue is that it all is focused on that first line. Ha lachma anya. This is the bread of, we say the bread of affliction. Um, Svarya likes the word destitution. That's okay. Um, but the achalu avasana ba'ara dimitrayim that our forefathers ate in Egypt. So where does the idea that matzah is called lechem oni. Where does that come from? So it comes from a pasuk in Devarim. The pasuk says, Lo tochal alav chametz. Do not eat chametz. Shivat yamim. Tochal alav matzot lechem oni. For seven days you should eat matzot, which is called lechem oni. Lechem oni. What does lechem oni mean? So the Gemara in Psachim, tells us about Lechem Oni. Two opinions in the Gemara. Amar Shmuel, Lechem Oni Ketiv, Lechem She'onim Alav Dvarim. The word Oni comes from the word Onim to answer. It's the bread upon which you answer things. Tanya Nami Hachim, we have a brighter that supports this Lechem Oni. Lechem She'onim Alav Dvarim Harbin. So what does that mean? What that means is that the matzah is the center of the meal. By the way, we all know this because actually you don't need the matzah till well into the seder, right? You don't need the matzah until you get to um till you get to motzi matzah in the middle of the seder. Yet we have the matzah on the table from the beginning. We'll see in a minute. We break the matzah at the very beginning. Why? Lechem she'onim alav devarim harude. The it's it's the it's the bread upon which that we talk about that we answer things that we discuss the the matzah the matzah needs to be on the table when we tell the story. By the way, there's an interesting custom. I know a lot of people you know see this in their haggadah and don't and don't focus on this. But the haggadah gives instructions. Sometimes the Haggadah says you should lift the, the, lift, the, lift the cup of wine and cover the matzah. Put down the cup of wine and uncover the matzah. Seems to be all throughout the Maggid you have this. The rule, by the way, you should know is that when you pick up the wine, you cover the matzah. When you put down the wine, you uncover the matzah. Why, of course? Because we don't want to embarrass anybody, right? So when you're picking up the wine, you don't want to embarrass the matzah, so you cover the matzah. When you put down the cup, so then you can uncover the matzah, right? Kind of like the tradition about um about covering the um covering the challah um on Friday night at the table. I know on Shabbos the reason's a little more complicated, has to do with brachos, but there is this idea, kind of this competition between the wine and the bread, the wine and the matzah, and therefore we allow each their space, but we don't force them to compete with one another. But lechem she'onim alav dvarim harbe. That's the first explanation in the in the Gemara for how we understand the word oni. A funny word, right? Oni from the word onim to answer. And of course, manishtana. The whole thing is um is 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 um you know is recited in a question and answer for davar acher. And this I have um, bolded lechem oni ani ketiv. So the Gemara darshins the fact that if you look back at the Pasuk, the, the word Oni is written chaser. It's written without a vav. And we all know there's no punctuation in the Torah. So when you look at that word, it doesn't look like Oni, but it looks like Ani, means a poor person. Mad Ani Shedarko Biprusa. What is Matzah? 
just like a poor person can't afford a whole piece of bread, so too we break the matzah in half. Now, that's one idea. Of course, we break the matzah in half. But not only do we break the matzah in half, but matzah by its very nature is considered to be lechemoni, meaning it's considered to be poor person's bread. It's the bread of slavery. It's the bread that we ate when we were slaves because we couldn't afford we couldn't afford bread. We, could, we, we didn't have the added ingredients to make bread. It was the bread of destitution, the bread of slavery. And therefore, that's what it says in, in Halach Manya. It says, Halach Ma'anya, this is the bread of affliction. We begin the Haggadah by remembering the fact that matzah is the bread of affliction. Matzah was the bread of slavery that the Jews ate. The Beis Yosef, in his commentary on the tour, quotes a kolbo. The kolbo was one of the Rishonim. And the kolbo writes, Haminhag lechalka. The, the minna, you know, we do something interesting. We we make kiddish, we have karpas, then we break the middle matzah. The truth of the matter is, we don't need to make break the middle matzah then. We can wait till right before matzah to break the middle matzah. Why do we break the middle matzah at the beginning? Right? So I know we say the reason is, so you have the afikoman, it can, keeps the kids interested. But what's the real reason? So the kolbo says the real reason is, haminhag lechalka kodem sheyikra ha says the reason you break it before the Haggadah is so you can say halach ma'anya. Halach ma'anya, this is the bread of affliction. Just like a poor person needs, um, or a poor person can't afford a full piece of bread, so too we can't afford a full piece of bread. So the reason you break the matzah is as a setup for halach ma'anya. Halach ma'anya talks about lechamoni, talks about the fact that it's poor person's bread. So we break the matzah before, before halach ma'anya. So the whole purpose, according to the to the to the Beis Yosef who quotes the Kolbo, the idea of halach ma'anya is to focus or is to emphasize the fact that matzah is the bread of slavery. Now that's all fine. There's only one problem. The problem is that later in the Haggadah, we're also introduced to matzah, and there. It's in Rabban Gamliel. You know, Rabban Gamliel says, Kol shalo amash lo shadvarim elu ba-pesach, lo yatsa yedei chovato. If you didn't say these three things on Pesach, you don't fulfill your mitzvah. Matzah zu she'anu ochlim al shum ma. This matzah, why do we eat it? Al shum shelo hispik b'tseikam shalavotenu lahachmitz. Because it wasn't time for our bread to rise. Until God came, before God came and saved us, Shenemar, as the Pasuk says. Because we were thrown out of Egypt. We didn't have time to tarry. We didn't have time to prepare any other food. Rabbi Gamliel's matzah is very different than the halach mo'anyo's matzah. The halach mo'anyo's matzah is halach mo'anyo ad yachalu avasana barad mitrayim. The halach mo'anyo's matzah is the bread of affliction. Rabbi Gamliel's matzah is the bread of salvation. It's the bread that we ate when we were leaving Egypt and we had to eat. We, we didn't have time to allow the bread to rise because we left it in a hastily. We left kibachi pazon. We left quickly. And that's what matzah is. So that's interesting. So the Magid actually is bookended by matzah. It starts with matzah, halach ma'anya, and it ends with matzah, matzah zushan uochlim in, in Rabban Gamliel. But the matzah of halach ma'anya is different than the matzah of Rabban Gamliel. The matzah of halach ma'anya is the matzah of affliction. The matzah of Rabban Gamliel is the matzah of redemption, the matzah of freedom. Now you could say, the simple way of saying it, I think is to say it like this. And that is to say that, of course, the entire Haggadah is the evolution of the story of, of the Exodus from Egypt. Matchil begunut umesayim b'shevach. You begin with the trouble and you end with the salvation. 
And that's exactly what we have in the matzah. Halach ma'anya. We begin. There are two. There are two messages of matzah. There are two themes within matzah. One is it. The, it's the bread of affliction. So we begin with the bread of affliction. Matzkil bignut. We begin with the bed. We begin with the fact that it's the bread of affliction. At the end, Rabbi Gamliel says that no, it's not the bread of affliction. It's the bread of salvation. That's Messiah b'sheva. So it could be, and this is really this is great in itself. I want to say something else, but this is great. In itself, that mock that the that that the Haggadah it says lechem shaonim all of dvarim harbe that you that you answer on the matzah, but maybe the symbol of the matzah, the whole Haggadah revolves around the symbol of the matzah, and the matchil bignut umisayim b'shevach is also around the matzah, right? That the matzah itself goes from being the bread of affliction, the lechem ani without above, the bread of poor people, to being the um to being the bread of uh, the bread of salvation um, that, that we didn't have time to allow our bread to rise I'd, uh, until God redeemed us from Egypt. So that in itself would be very interesting. That in itself would explain why um, why Halach Ma'anya introduces the matzah as Lechem Oni. That that's the beginning of the story of the Seder. And that the Seder is an evolution and it goes from Lechem Oni to the bread of salvation. But that doesn't expre- explain the rest of Halach Ma'anya. If that explanation was right, we would just say Halach Ma'anya, the Achalu Abatana Ba'ara de Bitraim. And that would be the end. Then we go to Manishtana. What about the next two lines? Koldich vin yete vi yecho, Kolditzrich yete vi yipsach. Hashata hachal de Shana haba ba'ara de Israel. So what's wonderful about the Haggadah, we all know, is the um the 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 uh, the, the, the kind of the huge number of commentaries that have been written and published over the years on the Haggadah. Rabbi Kelman and I always, when I teach, we always go say that we've been friendly for a very long time. We went to school together. When we went to school together, there weren't as many commentaries on the Haggadah. But now there are commentaries everywhere. Each year, new commentaries are published. And it's interesting to understand the commentaries, especially in light of where they were written and how they were written. So today, I want to share with you a, an explanation of Manishtana that was written by Rabbi Jacob of Lisa. Rabbi Jacob of Lisa wrote a book on the Shulchan Aruch. That book was called the, the Nitivot. We actually, I know in Toronto, they, they, they know what Nitivot is. But most of us just say the Nesivas, which is a commentary on, on, on the Shulchan Aruch, Hosha Mishpat. It's very popular in the world of the yeshiva. But he also wrote a commentary on the Haggadah. It's called Ma'aseni Sin. Now you have to understand something. This is going to be important in the commentary. Rabbi Jacob of Lisa, Rabbi Yaakov of Lisa, lived from 1760 to 1832. He lived in Poland, right? The situation of the Jews in Poland was very difficult, right? They didn't have Iron Dome. They didn't have a, an army to protect them. They had nothing, right? They, they lived in, a, in, a, in, a, in an uncertain, uncomfortable p- situation in which they were always worried for the next catastrophe to happen for which they could not defend themselves. With that, we can understand what he, um, what he says here. I just, I apologize. I just want to make this bigger. Um, I don't know why it got smaller, but now we'll make it bigger. Okay. Lize Amar Hamagid. The Magid, right? The, the Magid in the Haggadah. Liyashevze, to explain Halach Ma'anya. Ki Yadua, because it's known. Sha'af She'ein Miderech Ha'adam. Lismoach Al Ha'avar. Keshehu Shakua. Bebe Takele. Rabbi Yaakov of Lisa begins with an image. He says, everybody knows that if God forbid someone is taken into prison and then they're freed from prison, but then they're taken back to prison. They don't, when you're in prison a second time, you don't celebrate the fact that you got out of prison the first time, right? That's kind of irrelevant. Who cares that you got out of prison the first time? You're back in prison the second time. Now, 
just to give you a background, Rabbi Yaakov of Lisa is talking about himself, right? He sees himself in Gullus, in the exile, in Poland. He says, you know, we were, we were, we were in Egypt. We got out of Egypt. And now we're back in Egypt again. We're back in slavery. We're back in a difficult position. He says, why are we celebrating at the Seder? People don't celebrate. If you go back to prison, you don't celebrate. Mikomakom, however, he says, if because of the freedom that you achieved the first time, muftach bebirur, beli shum safek, if because of the first time you got out, you are absolutely certain that you will all be freed the second time, he says, then it pays to be, to be happy. So you're in prison the first time and you get out of prison. You have an amazing lawyer who's able to get anybody out of prison Anybody has a 100% track record of getting people out of prison. So you get out of prison, then you do something wrong, you go right back into prison. But you're, but you're, but you're confident because you have the same lawyer. And you know that just like the lawyer got you out the first time, the lawyer will get you out the second time. So even though you're in prison, but you celebrate the fact that you got out the first time, because the fact that you got out the first time gives you confidence that you'll be able to get out a second time. Right? Fein simcha gedolu mizu al hayitzia shavra. Kevan shebatuach shebevaday yitzay gamachav. Because you're because the fact that you got out the first time, the fact that you had the right lawyer the first time, that gives you confidence you'll get out the second time. And that he says allows us to understand halach ma'anya. Vizehu ma'amaro. Asher hayot shehi kelach ma'anya diachalu be'ara de mitzrayim be'atzvut. He says, this is the bread of affliction that we ate in Egypt when we were sad, when we were, when we were slaves, when we were in prison. Mikol makom, he says, nevertheless. Tigdal hasimcha. We have to be happy, even though we're still in Poland. We're still in slavery. How happy are we? We're so happy that we invite people to our house. We have a party. That's ultimate happiness. Why are we happy? Because since God took us out of Egypt, Muftachim Anachnu Bibirur. We are absolutely positive. Even though now we are here, even though now we're here, we're confident that next year we will be in the land of Israel. The Nesivos in the Masanisim says something absolutely remarkable. He says something remarkable about the experience of Jewish history, and he says an amazing pshat in Halachman. The thing that he says that's remarkable about, about Jewish history, and remember, this is the first comment in, this, in his Haggadah. This is the first thing he says about Magid. This is what he's thinking about as he sits around his table in Poland. And he says, what are we celebrating? I'm in Poland. Life is horrible in Poland, right? The, the situation of the Jews in Poland in the, eight, in the early 1800s was terrible. What am I celebrating? He says, no, that's why we start with Halach Manya. Because you know what I'm celebrating? I'm celebrating the fact that God took us out of Egypt. Ah, God took us out of Egypt. What difference does it make? We're in Poland, right? What, did, what, what, why, does that, why does that make us feel good that God took us out of Egypt 3,000 years ago? The answer is no. The fact that God took us out of Egypt 3,000 years ago that gives us the confidence that allows us to know that God's going to save us again. And that I don't know when that's going to be, but God's going to save us again. How do we know? Because the same lawyer who got us out the first time is going to get us out the second time. And that's why we celebrate God who got us out the first time will get us out the second time. And that's how he says pshat in halach ma'anya. He says halach ma'anya. He says, this is the bread of affliction. 
says this is he says we we remember we sit here in Poland we sit here in what he considers slavery and we remember the first time that we were slaves we remember the first time that we were slaves and we remember the whole story of the Haggadah and the fact that God saved us from that slavery and and we invite everybody to join us as we remember that story. But he says, but I don't understand it yet, because why do we care? We're sitting in Poland. Why are we inviting everybody to celebrate a, a redemption that took place 3,000 years ago that has no relevance to us because we're here in slavery now? What good is that for us? And that's why, that's how Halach Ma'anya concludes. Hashatahacha, he says, Lishana haba ba'arad Yisrael. Notice it says it twice. It says it, now we're here, next year we'll be in Israel. Now we're slaves. It says it twice for the following reason. Because the reason we celebrate is that just like the Jews in Egypt, they were slaves. God saved them and they were free. Because of that, God will redeem us again. And we feel that confidence, that knowledge that God will redeem us again. And I just want to say that when you think about that explanation of the um, of the Nesibos, living in Poland and kind of reflecting on the difficulty of celebrating Pesach, when he felt as if he was in slavery and his ability to recognize that you celebrate that redemption because that redemption means that we're going to be free again. That gives us the confidence. God saved us 3,000 years ago. We know that God is going to save us again. That's something I think that's relevant, obviously, in every generation, and this year especially, when we think about the fact that, you know, the situation in Israel, the situation around the world is, you know, is a, is a difficult situation. And you say, you sit down at the Seder, and how can you, how do you sit down at the Seder? How do you feel? You know, wh where is the redemption going to come from? The answer is that that's exactly why we celebrate Pesach. The reason we have the Seder is to answer that question. Where's the redemption going to come from? I can't answer that question exactly, but I can tell you one thing, that I'm confident the redemption is going to happen because just like God redeemed us from Egypt, so too God will redeem us today. Chag Sameach, everybody. Have a wonderful day of learning and a wonderful Pesach together. Thank you.